we have 144,000 uh, villages that had been abandoned. Okay, that's so. There's a lot of, and they a lot of them are connected with infrastructure, roads. Just to give you an idea, um, two years ago we were living in an abandoned village, and uh, a, a tractor was coming in winter and cleaning up our road. Our closest neighbors were a mile away. So um, also, if you have children, uh, the government is obliged to take bring a bus. <laughs> they build a bus station next to our neighbor's uh, land who, who, are, who have other neighbors a kilometer away. And they build a whole bus station so they can pick up their children and take them to school. So our country is made for the people, by the people. The recent I'm law... Bored. I'm going to do something. Okay, so let, let's just switch switch off the microphones. Um, I'm going to do it uh, manually, but uh, just uh, for some of you, yeah? Um, okay, so the country, the laws that are being passed are quite uh, miraculous. Um, it's like, for example, two years ago, there was a, there was a law passed 809, uh, signed by President Putin that puts spirituality above everything. <laughs> they're, they're all boggling their minds in the government <laughs> how to how to how to work with this law because the, the law says spirituality above capitalism, spirituality above everything else, and they're trying to like okay, well, how do we get budget for it so we could you know chop it up and do something <laughs> um the law that just been passed recently uh opened up russia like now in august 19th okay i've sent you all a copy of that law it opened up russia to the whole world with one criteria if you uh, had enough of all this neoliberal bullshit lgbt bullshit uh transvestites pinching your children's bums bullshit if you just had enough of all of it, like all of it, all, all this bullshit that's happening, like prostitutes in churches shooting films, the the opening of the of the in church, yeah, the the opening of the Olympia Olympic Games, which are close to satanic. If you just had enough of all of it, and it, <laughs> in fact, it was after the opening of the Olympic Games that the law has been passed because that was just the cherry on the top. Yeah, <laughs> okay. There is a law that's being that that oh, has already been passed that allows you to just join our country, okay, based on just the spiritual values. Before it was, you had to have certain uh, like uh, you know skills, which gave you citizenship. Now, the skill the only it's not even a skill. You just have to put spiritual values at the at the heart of of it all, okay, and. Um, There'll obviously be some exam on spiritual laws. And um, within our team that I'm working with, with Radamir, who brought me to God, actually. Uh, well, I came to God a month before that. Uh, I just hit such a rock bottom with my after my divorce, the bankruptcy, my son, who's not been speaking to me for three years. Uh, I, I just hit such a rock bottom that I, I, I inevitably got up on my knee. I got on my knees. I got so low that I got on my knees and for the first time in my life, I asked God for help because I, I was going without God. It's like, I was, you know, like, like all of us, like Jesus Christ, like what, like fuck off, you know, really. That's my, was my attitude to anybody that told me about Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, um, and now I have uh, him and mother Mary on my table supporting me because I, I really, I was, you know, I was suicidal. I put a rope on my neck three months ago and I was four months ago and I was ready to go. And, um, and the, the reason that Jesus Christ wasn't entering me, uh, and it's important why I speak of him because it's, you know, it's part of our religion in Russia. It's Orthodox religion. We have beautiful temples. We have beautiful uh, traditional values which you are all striving towards and I believe part of that is that we have accepted this religion uh, Islam is also here but it's you know primary religion is orthodox um, the reason that I wasn't accepting it is because uh, you know I didn't want to be the sinner because the whole thing that was preaching being preached in churches in our churches in your churches is this this punishable God that 
throwing lightning bolts and and we are sinners and we are slaves of God and all of that was just like no so I chose to go without God but Radamir, which is uh, this guy who I was going to translate you, but I don't think I can translate. Uh, I will just speak from my heart and I'll do a translation in, in within a day or two. And then actually, once it's you know done, I'll, I'll, I'll key points, speak, speak of the key points. I think that's the way to do it for me. It just didn't work. Um, so the Radamir, basically what they went and they went on metaphysical plane and they changed Jesus Christ to be the guy who we really want which is our friend, our brother, and a guy who can take us out of, out of any shithole when we get in there, when we really need help from above. So it's also, he said uh, in the Bible, and I haven't read the Bible, but it says that it, everyone's to their belief, okay? So if you believe in that, then he'll help you out. If you don't believe in that, well, do it yourself, <laughs> you know, and I just hit such a rock bottom that I chose not to go alone anymore. Yeah, I just I just thought, you know, if, if I can't believe in God, I'd rather believe that there is God, that there, that there is no God. Uh, exactly. As, as long as you believe in, in God. So it, the belief is very, very important. And since that moment, I started feeling uh, through prayer. And not the prayer that's written in the Bible. We tweak the prayer quite a bit. And you, uh, and I'll, <clears throat> maybe I'll even speak, or we'll do a little prayer later today. I, I have one translated, not by me, but somebody else. Uh, but the prayer basically makes you feel really, really good. Really, really good. Because you connect to God. Uh, you, you ask for love. That's just love for me, understanding, yeah? It's this blissful feeling pouring out of my heart, Okay where I feel no longer panic attacks, yeah? Where I don't feel any more anxiety, where I just feel, you know, like when you smoke weed the first two minutes before you get stupid, okay? But it's much, much better than that. Way, way better. Because without the stupidity and it just gets better and better. So this feeling of ang ang anxious free, um, no panic attacks and pouring of this bliss from your heart chakra and you're just walking your hands up, your, your palms are up and you're like, you feel so good. Uh, I can't explain it. So this feeling of good has been present with me quite a bit, not all the time, but it, but that, 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 that feeling, that blissful feeling uh and i'm not some religious fanatic i just want you guys to get it it, it was not about uh, us uh, ladies in those uh you know those things in churches like you see you know they all cover their heads this is not uh, this is not us <laughs> we're short skirts if we want to not me but the ladies <laughs> the i wear funky pants i dance to techno if i want to drum and bass like we're re we're really not religious fanatics so just you don't think that i'm just getting into some uh, sect or some crazy thing but this feeling of good is just what's been pouring out of my heart and I've been wanting to share it but moving getting back to our country our country is really really big and it's opening its hands its arms and it's saying guys come come because it's the last sane place on earth let's face it where um really the traditional values uh, are honored and traditional values are, i mean just basics we're talking about man and woman <laughs> having babies <laughs> uh we are talking about um you know being safe on the streets like like you know when i lived in south africa it's just like a constant worry that you're going to be either robbed or mugged or beaten and it happens. It really happens. I've been at a gunpoint once. I've been robbed eight times. They climbed into my house. They climbed through electric fence, 10,000 volts, whilst I was holding my son on my hands. Uh, you know, uh, I had a knife to my son's uh, uh, in a little trailer home that they lived there. Um, a hammer and a knife that came to and robbed me. And I take full responsibility because, you know, I'm not... I was an asshole to my workers and it's one of my workers that came. So, you know, I'm not like 
saying, uh, you know, uh, God punished me and I'm, you know, I'm the saint uh, angel. No, I take full responsibility. But be that as it may, it was very dangerous in South Africa. It's just a dangerous place. In America here, it's very dangerous. People are not letting their children out. I just want you to know that it is normal that your children walk up until 11, 12 o'clock at night. It is normal absolutely normal uh you know in summer when it's still light you can hear you can see kids running uh, six seven eight year olds running on the streets at 11 12 at night it's normal the crime rate it, I, I, it, it's virtually non-existent uh, okay um in 99.9 percent .9 of our cities I, there are some cities close to mongolia i heard that could be a little uh you know more, more i'm not no on Muslim side. I'm not saying anything against Muslims. Maybe I, I did hear, so I'm not gonna lie to you that it's but 99.9% .9 of our cities, you can walk any time of the day or night, woman or man, and nothing will happen to you. Uh it is that safe. It, it that's just cities. Countryside, the same. I in majority of our in, in most of our villages, the way to lock the door is just to put a stick across the door. Just to, so that you don't lock your door. You just put a stick to say the, the owner is not here. Don't come. <laughs> Still practiced widely, very widely. In our country, uh, the people have um, realized this deep connection to the land because the climate is harsh, okay? And, uh, but the land is abundant. From taiga, where you can collect uh, cedar nuts like bags and bags and bags 50 pound bags you can just collect of uh, cedar nuts thousands of them if you want to thousands of cedar nuts uh and you can sell them you don't even have to pay taxes on them you know you can, if you want you can just select them uh, you know uh, pay them uh, sell them with cash and then you know not pay a cent to the government and ten thousand thousands of bags you can set up a business getting other people what they do collecting nuts for you and buying bags of nuts for what I think it was uh, $20, $20 for like a, a hundred pound bag um, of cedar nuts, all on shell, uh, in, 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 sorry, in the whole cedar cone. Uh, you still have to get the, sh the seed nuts out and, and you know, but um, be that as it may, uh, with regards to taxes, just going to mention, I pay 4%. Uh, it's um, a thing they made, which is called self-employed. And I've got an app on my phone, uh, which I just, any sale that comes in from PayPal from you guys for my courses, I just put the whole amount in. I don't deduct anything. Put a whole amount, pay 4% and I forget about it, which is, you know, it, it's fine with me. The roads are amazing. It's safe. Um, the schools are, schools are free. <laughs> the food of schools is free. Um, universities are, look, you know, some universities are good, obviously Yale and all those other universities, they are far ahead, but, you know, universities are still much cheaper. So you, we, there's no such thing as taking a loan for university in our country. There's no such thing. In fact, you, you can, you, the land is cheap. You can buy yourself a land, one hectare of land with a home that you'll need to put in maybe five thousand dollars into uh, uh, repair, and I and I've done it twice. <laughs> uh, I haven't repaired it; they're just standing abandoned there. I'm like, I don't want to live in a, in, a, in a village. But if you do decide to come with like a whole group of people, you can buy a whole village out at three thousand dollar a plot with a home, with a hectare, and you'll have an electrical point, and they'll clean a road for you, and you can move in there with like fifty of your friends or twenty of your friends and set up a whole business. Here is a business for you. Abundance of berries, uh, uh, blackberries, blueberries, mulberries. Um, oh, yeah, blueberries. Yeah, abundant, like, like abundance of them. There's so much. You can get people to collect them for you. You could dehydrate them. The place where I was now, and sell them, obviously, uh, uh, all over, okay? Or put them in yogurts and make yogurts. with. I mean, that's just one business. The place where I was now in the south of Russia, there are so many fruit trees, I, I look at my stories. They're just plums on the floor everywhere. It's so sad. It saddens me. It's like apples everywhere. Even here, you walk around, there's apples on the floor everywhere. Just people had enough of these apples. They're just like, this app, there's so much fruit. 
because Russia is a place of food forests. They grow food forests. And the place in the south, um, you know, there's wild plums. They're not very tasty, like wild plums and wild apples, little things. People two, three hundred years ago, they would go out and that what's the thing called when you uh, connect a, a, a mother on mother stock, uh, another type of uh, a more abundant um, stock of plums? Uh, grafting, grafting, yeah, yeah, grafting. They they would go and graft these uh, wild pears and wild plums that are not very tasty, but they they got very good root system. I'm going to show you a pear now that's four or five hundred years old, and you'll see this graft. Um, I'm going to try and, and pull it uh, from... Um, uh, and you know what? Five hundred years later, the, the, there's so much pears in this forest and apples that... Uh, it, here, have a look at this. This is a a, a a pear tree grafted on a, a stock on on wild stock. You can see that little skirt, the huge skirt. It's about uh, uh, five feet in diameter, five feet in diameter. So, and there are thousands of them all over in this mountain range. So you don't all have to settle. Like we're not calling you to the cities. We're not calling you north. We're not calling you south. Um, in fact, we'll probably be doing tours to show you a bit of this and a bit of that and St. Petersburg and, uh, you know, we'll do tours as a whole team of, uh, uh, you know, and this is not a marketing proposal of any sort. I just want you to know that Russia is amazing, whether you do a tour with me. Uh, I, I just want to do a tour. I want to show you different parts of the country because I've been traveling a bit, but whether you do a tour with anybody, I couldn't care, whatever, you know, the main thing is that the country's got its hands open it's got sane values it's got fruit trees everywhere everywhere fruit trees and in the wild forest these these blueberries and mulberries and uh, uh, that are growing wild and such a big abundance of them maybe some of you have seen two years ago i was just shooting a forest floor around my home there's blueberries everywhere so th there's so much fruit mushrooms oh my god mushrooms a whole culture here mushroom picking uh you know they go with a little knife because you don't pull the whole mushroom out because there's a mica you know the <clears throat> fungi the spores the not the spores the my mycosia mycosia they go underground so you don't pull the whole mushroom out you leave a little stump so there's you know and they go with baskets men women children uh, like whole summer from Ju July, August, September, everybody's in the forest collecting mushrooms. Then they dry them. Then they can them. Um, it's like a big culture. And I'm, when I mean can them, I mean, I'm talking about like uh, like 200, three liter jars of, of, of mushrooms, berries, plums, like everything. You have enough. Just you work a bit with your whole family, <laughs> if you, you know, and you, if you want, and you have plums until uh, next summer, you're eating canned fruits, yeah? And you can do it on fructose if you want. Uh, you don't have to have it on sugar. Uh, mushrooms, everything. Or you can buy them at like $2 uh, for two, three dollars for a three liter jar of these mushrooms. Or also $4 for a big, big jar, of course. Um, you know, so you don't have to. That's what, like, I, I'm not picking anything right now. I'm right now in the city, so I'll get myself when I need what I need. There are grannies that are allowed to sell, grannies and grandpas that are allowed to sell without licenses, anything on the street. Organic produce that they grew in their garden, cheaper than the shop. <laughs> and they're selling that on the street without any licenses. That's just all, all over Russia, all over. It's like a standard thing. Uh, usually uh, some days, but like Sundays, but sometimes even like in big abundance, they'll be their everyday grannies and their little, what are they called, platochik, you know, they cover, they're tied up and they're sitting there and and I'll shoot this all on the streets for you in, 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 when, I, when I see them and I'll post it as stories on my Telegram. So no licenses. Uh, so you can buy organic food. They're not being shunned. They're not being pushed off the streets. Um, and of course, uh, there's so many things. I'll, I'll do a professional translation of this lecture. And there, there are many, many more things that um, the, that the benefits, okay? I want to know maybe, do you guys have any questions about maybe maybe some things you want to know that uh, um, 
if I can't answer, I'll at least write down the questions. And um, what's stopping you? What is stopping you from just uh, actually... So what they're allowed now is a three months visa uh, that you can apply pretty easily. Um, three months visa, you come and you just check out the country. Check out the country. Yes, yes, uh, I, Alicia. Well, <clears throat> I mean, what we're hearing about is the war. So, like, I want to hear, I want to hear from somebody in Russia what how uh, Russian people are impacted by this. Okay, very good question. <laughs> very good question. First of all, um, okay, in this lecture that I was that I am going to translate for you. Um, they speak about this con Ukraine. Uh, first of all, Ukrainians, uh, all our, most our families are from Ukraine. We're so crossbred. It's not even a 20, I've got 25% of my blood from Odessa. My grandmother is from Odessa, blood grandmother. So, and most of us in Russia, we have relatives in Ukraine. Okay. Ukrainians uh, split off from the main uh, mother in 1994, I think sometimes in the 1990s. And uh, they started to forget that they're Russians. The role of Russians in the world is to show unconditional love to the planet, to accept others as they are, because we have eight, uh, 250 uh, ethnicities registered and 800 and plus ethnicities unregistered who have been accepted uh, on their free will nobody's been forced attacked you know none of that stuff is true so 800 uh, ethnic is unregistered and 250 uh, registered and about 120 uh, languages that are being taught at schools ethnic language with russian um and they're very happy that they've been accepted because they would have been swamped by you know others who would have raped and killed None of that happened. They've been accepted into our wide country by free will, free choice, and they uh, speak their language and Russian language, and they're very happy because they they were received uh, the writing abilities. And with writing abilities and very deep, deep Russian language, because it's so deep, it comes from Sanskrit. Sanskrit and Russian language are two languages that are able to code cells that are able to code the body. They, they just, they, they, they're so deep. Um, it's such deep languages. You know, I, 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 when I try and describe it, something in English, I have to use like 10 different words just to give a meaning for one word. Like Orthodox, Prav, and I'll get back to your question. Pravoslavia, Orthodox. Orthodox, like, what the hell? It sounds like so dangerous. <laughs> Pravo means the right. Slavia, to, 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 uh, to um, Slavists, like when you, um, you know, like, God, I wish you well, you know, that's the word Slav. Prava Slavia is the, the right way to say, I wish you well to God. You know, that's just one word. So to get back to what we are not impacted at all. I was following the war for three years, uh, for two years, uh, closely, like where they're moving, the, the tanks, where they're all going. And I got so depressed and I realized that uh, we uh, have the woman and man within us. The woman within me takes this information and I manifest it further into the world. More war, more panic, uh, more fear. And it got to a point where I, I got so depressed, divorced, and I realized that I'm not going to follow the war anymore. It's happening there. Ukrainians forgot that they're Russians. And... There on the battlefield, magic is happening right now, okay? We are hearing stories of people being atheists, not believers, from both Ukrainian and Russian side. You know, the men are going there and it's like, they don't believe in God. <laughs> and we have one saying, on battlefield, though no more non-believers. You very quickly start to believe. That's the first good thing we're hearing. So non-believers going into the uh, the, the burning uh, chamber and coming out, who's coming out as believers. That's awesome. Uh, second thing we're hearing, good thing, is that mothers would say, he went to the war, never cleaned anything, never washed dishes, never cared to do anything, just slept on the couch, drank beer, came back from war. Mom, how can I help you? 
where can I, you know, start washing the dishes, start sweeping the floor, it ch changed man. So who are we to say that this war is, you know, against, uh, uh, you know, I believe, I believe this war is much necessary. So Ukrainians forgot that they are Russians and uh, not they just forgot, <laughs> they started accepting, the, the whole thing started when uh, um, Zelensky wanted to accept nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Uh, it was in December 2021 or 22, I don't, you know, just two months before the war started. That was the final penny. Um, they wanted to be accepted into NATO, which would mean that NATO would put their nuclear weapons 300 miles from Moscow. Okay. <laughs> We moved in. We didn't let that happen, and uh, it's it's doing. A, I don't even know what's happening. I'm so far from it because I chose not to take uh, to accept. To, I chose not to follow it. You know, uh, closely. I, I really. I, I. I. In three months, I don't know if they moved further in or further out. I wouldn't even know, and I don't care. All I care is that it's safe everywhere. I drove fifty miles past the war because they opened up through Mariupol, which is this uh, Azov steel place, huge steel manufacturing plant, massive. I think it's like so huge, like 10, 15 miles wide, if not bigger. And I drove past it um, about three months ago. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> people are being having their hands and feet being ripped off 50 miles away. I'm driving in my car, listening to music and having great time. That means there is no such thing as object. I'm looking for pictures for you of objective reality. So another thing that our team of Radamir believes in, we don't believe in uh, um, objective reality anymore. Okay, objective reality means that the reality is happening uh, by itself, and we are some separate blobs of it. So as far as I'm saying, yes, Ukraine war, but I'm not saying it's separate. I, I'm saying we all caused it. We're all responsible for it. Uh, but I'm not going to panic about it. Okay. I'm going to do my thing, which is this connection with you this morning. For me, it's uh, 7.30 a.m. Um, to, to, to do something positive, to change your lives, to invite you to our country. Yeah. So there's no such thing as objective reality. Th those that believe in objective reality have factual proof that such a reality exists, okay? Uh, those that believe in magic and spells and Harry Potter stuff uh, have factual proof that that is what's working for them, okay? <laughs> those believe that God is this uh, dude upstairs that's throwing lightning bolts to all our sinners and slaves get a proof of such reality and those of us who believe that there is no objective reality that uh, we are gods because cats have kittens <laughs> dogs have puppies and god as babies have gods <laughs> i am god your goddess aisha sharon your goddess julia you know we're all gods and goddesses who take full I believe, responsibility and accountability for our lives. And guess what? My panic attacks stopped and my fear has stopped when I accepted that reality. It's it's so funny that my 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 fear of money is gone. I'm 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 so so capitalistic at my heart. My dad was charging me two thousand dollar rent at the age of twenty one when my deco business started to boom. $2,000 rent at the age of 21, 22. My dad wanted to charge me rent the, uh, when I came to visit him three months before his death. Because I came to visit him and said, Dad, I'm here in your near your town. Can I come and visit? He's like, well, pay rent and, and come and live. So I have capitalistic money thing so driven into me that when I would hit like minus or zero, I would, I would, I would, you, you don't understand. I, I would climb walls because it was so scary. The feeling of being bankrupt, left on the streets, those, uh, those uh, tents in California, in San Francisco, all those homeless people, of course, and, and, and the homeless people in our country. 
not our country in South Africa. So the fear of uh, being bankrupt is so was was so huge that I would freak out. I've hit a rock bottom zero <laughs> with a three thousand dollar debt, which is no thirty thousand dollar debt, no three thousand dollar debt, uh, not much. But I hit a zero in my in my bank account in May June. Uh, June, June, and I was like, boom, rock bottom. And on top of it is the divorce. On top of it is my son who told me F off and that he wants to murder, he wanted to murder me. He even told me such things. And uh, and I'm, I left the house that I was building to Zoya, to my ex-wife, and I'm standing here in this abandoned village, not abandoned, there's two neighbors, so I'm, I shouldn't lie, in this home that I bought for $3,000 know, with electricity. Uh, you can look at my stories in Telegram. I'm saying like, and now, instead of saying Putin or Trump, because I'm already in, you know, in the in in the vibe in in the vibe of Radamir family, or that I am God, the question was why did I want to create this shithole? <laughs> Not Putin or Trump. That's another thing you guys got to get on the on the on the on the on the whole thing is not Putin and Trump. Okay, and I'm just hyper, you know, over exaggerating. <laughs> How? Why did I want to create this? Why did I want to have this divorce? Why did I want to ha have this uh, rock bottom? And why did I have my son who wants to murder me, wanted to murder me? And uh, the answer started to come. And uh, at that point, I knew that first I make a good, I generate, not I generate, through uh, God and my heart, I generate this feeling of, uh, let's call it bliss. Let's call it calmness, bliss, just this nice, nice feeling. The closest I get to is when I smoke first drag of weed before you get stupid, but a million times better. Okay, there's just that release of polarity, tight, tightening spring. I, I, you guys know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't, but it's this really nice feeling. So I knew that I need to generate this love in my heart. And then the reality outer reality starts morphing according to that no but i didn't have proof i'm getting goosebumps i didn't have the proof i just knew that going with an anxious knot in my heart chakra in my throat that anxiety panic attack going like that in life came brought me to a dead end i lost it all i had 15 bitcoins i, I sold them for a thousand dollars I had uh, a business that was with all my Deco stretch fabric that just had, what, uh, 25 million rubles divided by 100, uh, two and a half, uh, uh, $250,000 worth of just cloth, stretch fabric, cloth, spandex. Uh, I lost, I sold that business uh, and never got into a court case and got like, I came out with zero. Um, and I came out of South Africa with uh, four suitcases after 25 years of working on my own business. So um, I knew that that, that anxious feeling is uh, not going to get me anywhere. You know, the panic attacks, the rushing everywhere, run, 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 do this like a rat race. I just knew I came to a dead end. But the new that I generate this blissful love with God uh, that will change my reality, I didn't have proof. And because I was hit the rock bottom, I couldn't go to South anymore because I had my car packed, my, you know, old van, uh, yeah, the van, the 4x4 van, which I bought, by the way, for $3,000 for 4x4 van, um, you know, secondhand, but beautiful. You know. Anyway, I accepted that that another thing that I, our family preaches is this uh, um, agreeing. You agree that that is my reality. You stop fighting it. Because the last thing you want to do is fight it. No, no, no. Affirmations. I'm rich. I'm abundant. I'm rich. I'm abundant. <laughs> I'm rock bottom. I was rock bottom broke. I couldn't put petrol in my car to drive. And uh, I had some food in the fridge. And I was like, God, I agree that this is the reality right now. I unpacked my car. And I didn't even have internet there. I swam in cold water. Okay. I walked and I just prayed to generate bliss, blissful uh, energy. The next day, <laughs> one of you guys, one of my subscribers just donated me a thousand dollars. I'm like, 
fuck it's working. That's it. A thousand dollars. It just donated me out of the blue. That's how it works. And since that time, okay, it's like broke the ice. It was 6th of uh, June this year. Since that time, it's been a confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation. A week ago, I'm sitting and I'm having, what, $10 in my account. I have food. I'm eating avocado. You know, I'm not complaining. Like everything, my rent is paid. I have $10 in my account. I'm like, uh, with a $3,000 overdraft, which is whatever. I'm not bothered about <laughs> God. I state my will. I am going to this faster seminar and I need one and a half thousand dollars. I'll prove you now. I have five students that signed up for my, um, by architecture drawing course at $300 each. Now you, you, and there's been so many of these situations. I stopped having fear, guys. I stopped having fear of money. You would think, I lost a $10 in your account. Are you fucking out of your head? No, guys. I've got God with me. <laughs> I've got God and I'm generating blissful love from my heart. And with this blissful love that God gives you, and I'm sorry to sound like a religious fanatic, which I'm not, but really, I couldn't do it without God. You want to do it without God? Go try. Go try. I did. For 42 and a half years, I went without God. I was like, not. I'll do it all by myself. I am God, I said. I am the God. And I got on my knees very quick. Not very quickly. 42 and a half years, I got on my knees uh, with a rope over my neck, uh, slot, snot dripping in tears, crying. And I got on my knees and said, God, I need your help. I can't do it alone anymore. So everybody is at different stages in their life where they need to go, do, do, you know, but really, and it's not Lord, it's not like this, but, you know, it doesn't matter how, how you call him, but we call him Jesus, Jesus Christos, uh, because uh, he, a man came to, as a man, человек стал Богом, чтобы Бог стал человеком. Нет, Бог стал человеком, чтобы человек стал Богом. God became man, so that a man, you, me, everybody, could become gods. Okay? And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into Jesus Christos, but that's the main generator of this love feeling in, in, in me. Okay? Um, they metaphysically tweaked him. Uh, so it's not that, uh, you know, that uh, guy on the cross anymore. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want to talk about that anymore because some of you, it might, you know, you might go into panic and, and, and worry. So just to answer your question about war, it does not affect 99% uh, of our country at all. We're not feeling it. We're not smelling it. We're not, uh, you know, there's posters like saying men who want to uh, go and sign a contract, they get on $150,000, uh, $170,000 payment. It's a free will. Uh, and uh, as soon as they sign a contract, they they have to they do they have to do one year uh, minimum, okay? And they get a hundred seventy thousand dollar payment with which they can you know cover their. Um, no, it's not one hundred seventy thousand dollars. I mustn't lie. It's seventeen thousand uh, dollars of upfront payment, and it's a monthly pay. You sign a contract, okay? Free will. Uh, uh, Men who get taken after school because uh, the military is compulsory, they don't go. They don't send them to the battlefield. Uh, they go to uh, because we have big borders all over the country. They have they go and they stand on the borders and they they do their service there. So it's not like you know young men are just being you know. So sign a contract, you go. Yes, there is a chance that you'll get killed, but uh, your family gets a payout if you do get killed. Quite a big payout. If you get injured badly, like uh, losing an arm or a leg, God forbid, uh, you get quite a large sum of money, large enough to, for you to buy a flat, cash. So um, laws are very fair. Laws are very fair, and nobody's forcing us, uh, you know, into anything. Um, so I'm not even worried. So the war is not, uh, in fact, the war has just catapulted our uh, economy because uh, they tried to, NATO tried to pr stop um, through sanctions. They, they put 7,000 sanctions onto our country and our country just, they blew up our pipeline. 
two, two pipelines going to Europe that we built, they blew them both up. And uh, we just directed our mm, all our energy uh, gas south. China, India, um, yeah. So God is with us, really. I I'm sorry to say that, but it's it's a country that's uh, even Putin said <laughs> God is is driving our country into like where it needs to go. So the laws are being very fair, uh, amazing laws. We're just boggling our mind. How you know? <clears throat> Obviously, not everybody loves Putin, and it's not about whether you love him or not. Even within our Russia, people are like no, it's what is twenty years in power? He must get off and give other people a chance. I'm just so happy that he's there because he's so wise. His brain is working. He's doing Taekwondo, uh, you know, martial arts. His brain is still firing up. He's got so much wisdom to put somebody young there, you know, you, you, you know, so all I'm saying is come and visit the country. Let's organize a tour, whether you organize it with me or we organize it with somebody else, just come and visit. Let, let's, let's, let's take a month off. Hypothetically, let's just dream. You, you we organize five, six, 10 people. You guys come here and we'll organize a cool tour, take you to Baikal, which is that lake in the Bayerkutsk amazing lake it's the cleanest largest uh body, body of water it's very pretty there we'll take you to taiga um which is this abundant forest uh wild forest siberia we'll take you to st petersburg of course moscow and nature around it karelia which is two hours north from uh, st petersburg beautiful with baladega lake we'll take you south uh, uh, show you the mountains, the Caucasian mountain range of the south. Show you all these uh, fruit trees that I'm talking. Uh, fruit trees are everywhere, but show you the plums. The pl <laughs> there's plums and pears, those the grafted. Yeah, that's in the south. Show you the Black Sea, Sochi. Show you Crimea, which is you know close to where the war is happening, and uh, uh, there's beautiful, beautiful nature there. You know, and and let you decide where you want to settle. Or maybe you'll decide you want to have a mobile home and travel throughout Russia. You know, whatever. Uh, uh, what the, the opinion that I've made is that um, I don't want to sit in one place anymore. Uh, in, we, in Mexico, I'm going to Mexico in January to talk about how to plan new cities of the future in Russia and in Mexico. So uh, for, that's for me. But everybody is different. You might want to come with your whole family of five, six, seven children, uh, large families are very accepted, uh, not just accepted. The, if, if you have, um, for every child, you get a payout. For three children, you get a flat that uh, um, I believe that you don't have to pay for. Um, yeah, there's so much support uh, that goes if you uh, have a lot of children uh, because uh, they really support that because the country currently having a negative, uh, you know, the, our population is decreasing. And with such large uh, land, we need more people. And, but we can't just have any people. We need people that have tra like traditional values that understand that man and woman are made by God to make a union. Not man and man, not m woman and woman, uh, but man and woman, you know? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, changing a pole, cutting off a penis and putting in something else there is not normal. Having fear is not normal. Um, well, fear is a different thing. We're working with fear with our, with our, with our Radamir family. Um, anyway, Aisha, yes. Any more questions, please raise your hands. Yeah, I'm, I'm also interested in the Kin's Domain movement. You know, the Kin's Domain. Good, good yeah. question. I traveled through quite a few communities and there are a lot of them. Um, what I've seen is uh, people who haven't worked their traumas, who have various beliefs, like this one, Buddha, this one, Krishna, this one, that one. And uh, I haven't seen cooperation on a large scale. Um, I, maybe one or two neighbors who like run a festival in a certain kin domain, they'll be like, you know, uh, what I have seen is uh, they take 10, because land is so cheap, they take 10,000 hectares, <laughs> 10,000. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> people take their land for apocalypse days, uh, apocalyptic days. They live in the city, 
And the ones that live in the kinder main, the children have to walk five, six miles to the neighbors because all the one hectare Anastasia kinder mains are empty. Um, that's just near Moscow. So summer, they come and live there. Good times, warm. But then autumn, winter, spring, they're not there. Uh, not everywhere. In the south, there are some popular kinder mains. And when you come to a tour, I think most definitely was Yuri Smirnov who will be running a tour with me. Um, I will will go to uh, a few kinder mains in the south and maybe even under Moscow one and show you the ones that are working well, where there is cooperation, collaboration. So we'll definitely show you. But it's 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 work. So some of these kinder mains even uh, they brought in Dian Diana Christian, so sociocracy, sociocracy, Diana Christian. Uh, uh, yeah, they invited her to come and speak and give workshops. So people who want to make it work, they make it work. Um, I am in the opinion now that we need to scale down in terms of lands, land, uh, uh, like this, this, um, let me show you, you've all, you've all seen my uh, 120 hectare community, uh, plan. Yeah. Let me show it to you. So even that I want to scale down because not everybody can develop their one hectare. It's just a lot of land. Okay, so that's uh, what we how we scale down here is 40, uh, one acre, one acre per, 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 per family, one acre, one acre, one acre, one acre. There are all the plots, all the roads are on contour line. Uh, that's a business we could develop together, a whole community like that that acts like a tourist destination. That's my bar architecture school, yeah, with empty pieces of land. That's a permaculture center with all these greenhouses and aquaculture and garden beds and flowers. Uh, two schools, Shetinian School, uh, Tecos, uh, and another art school, Hobbit, uh, Hobbitville with like Hobbit homes. These are all hills, a hill here, um, a hill here. So all these objects, uh, buildings are on the hills. So I walked with a topographical map and there, there is an Earthship Hotel and there's an Earthship Hotel right here, kindergarten here. So I really went all town to town. There is a festival ground, a theater. So we could set this up as, as a business, but it needs to be, a, um, it needs to be based on spiritual values and, uh, you know, but that's a separate conversation. So, um, you know what? Who wants to live in kinder mains? We'll we'll take you guys there and show you. Uh, I think it's a good idea to 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 visit at least three, and not just to visit to actually speak with the people who live there and let them tell you of their um you know of their um, pluses and minuses. But yeah, people are living like that who want. I don't want to live in a kinder main anymore. I, that's really what I wanted. And then I went to visit them and I am uh, in a place where, uh, as crazy as it sounds, I've seen 120 people live on one tenth, one fifteenth of a hectare. They bought a hotel, three story buildings. And the main thing that they do, they work with psychology. So they do processes so people don't butt heads. Yeah, that's the main work. They do, they, they do psychology courses. Um, but very special psychology that helps them to figure figure these things out that are on butt heads. And 120 people live very nicely. I, I was there, what, about a month or two ago, and uh, I was quite surprised. Over three years, they're living like that. And I liked it. So basically, we, we don't have to be forced on this huge pieces of land. If, uh, not, nobody's forcing us, but there's a variety of living conditions. Um, uh, the family that I'm part of, the Radamir family, they're renting two houses now. And there's like 15 people there, 20 people, and they're like amazing energy, you know, amazing energy. The children are, uh, everybody's looking after the children. Um, I've never, it's so boggling with me because I always think of one woman, one man, one child. Although I'm speaking of traditional values to you, now I'm also seeing that there's other ways to live which I'm open uh, but not talking about gays and lesbian, I'm talking about still woman and man, but it's like a bigger family, very interesting. Like I could hold a woman's hand, but she could be, she could have a husband and her husband will be cool with me because there's such trust. And he knows that I'm not wanting to get into her pants. I'm just holding her hand because I'm feeling a, a, a sisterhood, uh, a sister, like a, like a connection, you know? And that is amazing for me because like with my previous marriage, if I even looked at another woman, I'd be like, what? 
you know and, and of course i take full responsibility for it because i was the victim and a victim finds a tyrant always you know <clears throat> shame guilt and all that other bullshit um so yeah any more questions we'll definitely visit the uh, kind domains uh, aisha Yeah, so Actually, yeah, yeah. I have another question. Go for it, go for it. Of course, please. Okay. Um, because I, uh, I remember when I was young and the Soviet Union broke up and there was all these paper, uh, these pictures in the newspaper of, um, you know, people standing in line for hours to get bread and that sort of thing. And then I read how that was resolved is that outside of the big cities, there were these strips of land that were given to people where they could go yeah. and grow their yeah. Very, It's amazing. It's the only thing that saved us because in 1994, when America came, the Yeltsin, the you know weak president, they want weak presidents. So the and I'll answer those questions in chat. By the way, thank you, Serena. Uh, um, Russia is crypto friendly, big time. Uh, in fact, our technologies are at the forefront. Uh, I can do. I can send a payment to a number right now in five seconds in five seconds time you'll receive it um so but uh yeah in 1994 basically america took over our government and they collapsed our whole country they split it into pieces we had more americans sitting in our parliament building than russians we have american flags yeltsin came there to america and said god bless america you remember um yeah so it's quite scary uh, and Russia collapsed. All our all our factories that were built during communistic times that produced everything that won the World War II, uh, they were all stripped of equipment. Equipment was sold and melted for steel. Submarines were melted for steel. Tanks were melted for steel. Everything was just melted for steel uh, and cut with machines, cut into pieces. So they tore the country apart and they put it to the knees. And uh, uh, yes, then the land was given to people uh, <clears throat> 600 square meters, which is uh, one seventh of an acre, one seventh of an acre. And people planted potatoes. People planted potatoes and uh, they survived because everybody lost jobs. 12 million people immigrated. My family was one of them. So all the bright ones that had some sense, some money, they all immigrated and everything else stopped, collapsed, and the country came to a standstill. Um, a lot of people died because they started drinking. Uh, alcohol was not even available. They started drinking the turpentine, uh, which they sieved through. Uh, cloth and a lot of people died very smart people uh, a lot of scientists a lot of biologists because they lost their jobs and except science and biology they couldn't do anything so the weak ones they died uh, through drinking turpentine and other liquids and others went and planted potatoes and this culture <laughs> just have been having tears this culture of growing food is very much implanted in us. Everybody grows food, like 90%. I don't know percentage. I don't want to lie, but uh, you'd go like this with a phone if you stand on a hill and you're just seeing all bums in the air, <laughs> like, or, you know, people are digging potatoes, women's bums in there, men's bums, uh, everybody's with forks. They all come together. They help each other dig out these potatoes. Uh, and not just potatoes, they're growing everything. Uh, two greenhouses, two small greenhouses give you like 150, 200 pounds of uh, tomatoes. You know, it's so abundant. It's all organic, obviously. It's all organic. Uh, I, I can't speak of on the shop's behalf, but people grow organic food because they eat it themselves. And, you know, people don't put uh, chemicals. It's um, um, from cow manure, everybody uses cow manure because a lot of you know this cows so they get, get cow manure for free. Um, so that's what made us survive is growing of food in the land. And since that time, and even before that time, these called duchess, uh, 600 square meters now it's 1200 square meters, uh, generally, uh, maybe even 1500 square meters, so one third of an acre, one third of a third of an acre, and people build their homes. There are no building laws. Um, you can build anything you want up until 60 feet high. 
If you build anything up until 60 feet high, you can live in it without registering your home with anyone. As long as it's under 60 feet high, which is three story. Um, um, and I mean, no building laws. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Like we don't have to worry about like, oh my God, an engineer stamp, architectural stamp, septic stamp, uh, you know, like whatever. You just build and live. Like that's really cool. So the laws are really sane. They're made for the people. Any so any more questions? Uh, um, did I answer that, Aisha? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just wanting to sort of get a bit of a trajectory because I mean I don't know. I, I'm from Canada, but I, like I, you know, the attitude here isn't quite as bad as it is in the states towards Russia. But it's still you know Russia. Like there, it's just so negative, and I and I know what's going on in Ukraine that it, that that northern chapter of people and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, but I'm just trying to get a, sort of a an overview of the history. So when people went back and started to, it's kind of like the people themselves that brought brought Russia back by by having these areas where they can garden and they became more self sufficient. And I also heard a fellow talk about that period of time where it really changed the the character of the Russian people so that they became much more focused on helping each other. Yeah, 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 of course, because uh, when the factory stopped, uh, everybody lost their jobs. And I mean, everybody lost their jobs. Teachers st stopped being paid at schools. Policemen stopped being paid. They were murdering left, right and center. It was so dangerous in 1990s, black mafia everywhere, just killing people, uh, killing the r people who are making some money, who are, who are um, anyway, um, yeah, the people, the normal, the 90% of the people who stayed and uh, planted, they we always had this thing that people helped each other, though. I, I don't know if it radically changed then. It, we always like, you could be walking. If you're sitting in a, in, in, on a street in winter, people will come to you and like, hey, are you okay? And and if you're drunk, they'll take you home and let you sleep over because, you know, it gets cold in winter. And the, the northern, the far northern you go, the more they'll help you. They'll get you off the street. They'll drag you off the street. So you just, uh, because you don't fall asleep in a drunken state. So this helping, like when you move in into this dacha, uh, you know, the neighbors will come and bring you seedlings. Um there's just a culture of ours. And to answer your other question, whether it's these people who got us out, I think it was a, a collaborative effort of that culture of helping each other, of God seeing that people are helping each other, let me help. And a very smart leader that came at this rock bottom, fallen apart country um, who played the game of NATO. It was very young Putin at that times and you know, he wanted to play the. He didn't want. He 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 was always for the for the for our land. But he played their game to trick them, and they thought another another idiot Biden, <laughs> who we can who we can trick and manipulate. <clears throat> you know, I don't know about idiot Biden, but you know, I shouldn't judge. Uh, but uh, you know, like a young and stupid, and uh, we can pup a puppet, yeah, um, and. Uh, very slowly, he got the team around him, which was all traitors. He got them out. They got disappeared. <laughs> some got jailed, some got killed, and he just cleaned up uh, a field around him. And in 2008, that's when he stated in the Munich conference that uh, uh, we no longer want to accept a unipolar world. Because Russia is all about multipolar, because we have accepted 800 ethnicities by free will within our country. Even the, um, in Donbass, where uh, those new parts of Ukraine that were um, in, you know, now you know, taken over by Russian military, yeah, they had an open vote, open vote in the country, <laughs> in those, those lands, and I'm getting goosebumps. Um, all over my hand and my my cheeks everywhere. They had a vote, and every everybody ninety nine percent voted for to joining Russia because they knew what it was like during living in Ukraine. It was just stripping, stripping, robbing, robbing, robbing. Ukraine was full of forests. Look at it on the map now. When Ukraine was full of forests, it was the land of the forest. Uh, it, it, it's just it's like 
you know, like you fly over some parts of America and these squares of empty farmland. They stripped it so fast <laughs> and it's huge. It's the largest country in Europe. Uh, they stripped it. Finished. All the forest. There's no more forest left at all. Little strips between some fields, maybe. So um, to answer your question, uh, we had a, a, we have a smart leader that's still in power. Uh, and I pray for him pretty regularly that, you know, um, so that really helped. And uh, I think I think uh, we tried going down this capitalistic route for 30 years. I mean, up until before 1990s, we didn't see a can of Coca-Cola. I, I got my first can of Coca-Cola in 1989 and I was washing it with soap for three months and I was praying it on like some artifact from Lord. And uh, that's what it was for us. Uh, when Chip and Dale came to our country, it was, you know, we didn't have any of these. Uh, then after Chip and Dale came horror movies, horror movies and, 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 and shooting movies. And horror movies were played as soon as children got back from school. So I was watching Freddy Krueger from the age of six until nine. Um, Freddy Krueger and all terrible horror movies because they were played parents at work children at home very strategically planned by american government by uk government whoever was trying to have us in their ass and they just uh, tried to rip us uh, rip the children out by playing horror movies and pornography Por pornography was played openly open tv and uh, and uh, and uh, and horror movies and that's what was played during the time that the kids got back from school um that fucked us up uh, uh pretty seriously um but russian spirit stayed strong god is with us um i worked through it psychologically who hasn't maybe they got drunk too much and they killed themselves already <clears throat> but i got strong so i think it's a natural process uh of um not a natural process you know everything is is sacred i'm in the belief that everything is sacred that nothing happens for no reason you know um let me give you an example there were no other the, the other kids who didn't have that darkness within them like i did at the time played soccer on the streets they didn't watch those horror movies so you have to find tune your own receiver uh, how you your frequency to a certain frequency through the way you came into this world through the parents who have chosen my parents were fighting each other my dad was drinking every almost every day too much drinking i was in this fear mode i don't know my past lives but that fear mode and i resonated with freddy krueger like like that other kids who didn't resonate like what are you talking about i'm we're playing soccer on the streets we're having fun we're doing little models model making little planes and and things that they made with little engines and you know, the little, little petrol engines, you made little planes, that uh, radio controlled planes. So kids who wanted to have fun and do things, they, 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 they did that. I wanted to sit home and watch Freddy Krueger because that's what my uh, energy field resonated at the time. That's what I did. And that's what I got. So we get what we want. Our reality, this is another belief we carry with Radamir, is we, uh, our reality is the byproduct of our wishes. Wishes and is anti-matter. Antimatter that they've been trying to find for all these years is our wish. Antimatter creates matter. When you really, 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 really wish for something. Let me give you an example. I was, after my first divorce, it was about five years ago, and I, re I was so down uh, uh, because I was so alone and down that I was just in tears with emotions. Yeah, I screamed out into the universe. I said... I remembered my first, first uh, goal that I liked, Alona. And I, I, I shouted out into the universe, Alona, where are you? And so much emotion, so much tears were with that phrase. She wrote me the next day. And we haven't spoken for 26 years. She wrote me the next day. So this is our wishes. Okay, it don't work. <laughs> when I wanted to come to this training in Yekaterinburg, I, I said, I state my will. I am going to this training. And the way you say it, you're like, you mean it. You believe it. Believe. You mean it. And 
but you accept that all is perfect. If it's not meant for me to be there, um, I won't end up there. But at the same time, my wish is enough for, and that is what I want. And my wish is enough of a proof that that's what will happen. But at the same time, I accept if it's not meant to be, I want to end up there. So it's like playing with both realities. So I forgot the question. What was the question? Was that question? Um, yeah, so, 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 um, everything is sacred. Everything that's happening in your countries is also amazing. The reason that you're sitting on this call is because of what's happening in your countries. Uh, all the drugs, if it was all hunky dory, you wouldn't be here. Um, uh, so your country is literally pushing some of you out, uh, through, you know, and you're understanding that there is a way out. Um. Yeah, Jill. Yes, there is a way out. You can come and visit. Oh my it. God! Thank you so much, Alosha. I, this is so exciting to hear your transformation. I'm. I just get so happy seeing you. I uh, can't wait to be in the drafting class. I'm right now in the Vancouver airport. I'm. I'm walking down to my gate. I'm getting on a flight to New York, but um, I've been trying. That's why I'm in and out of the call. But it's. It's like, I don't know, I feel very emotional about listening to this because it's so anti my, my traditional thinking. Like, we have been so programmed, so stupidly programmed, excuse me, but to not be open to the truth. And, and it's like the heart is really what leads us. And... I mean, I just like, I remember when I met you and I just felt like so elated to know you and to know that there was someone like you doing the work that you're doing. And and then when I hear this whole thing about moving to Russia, it's like so freaking weird. And I'm sitting here going, I could do it. I mean, I could imagine doing it. My grandfather, like your own family is from Odessa. He came ah. over around 1900, around 1900, okay, um, cool. and America was a dream, and it was a dream in that era for so many people, and that dream is not what it's laid out to be, and once your eyes happen open in America, I've been working on Bobby Kennedy's campaign for a year now, almost, for 10 months, and he's been banned from everything because he's speaking the truth. And no one wants to know the truth. And mm -hmm. he speaks it very eloquently and very simply. And he's been banned from all media because the pharmaceuticals, of course, run the media. And the pharmaceuticals right now don't like him because he's spoken uh, Jill, very outspokenly. Jill, yes. Very important, Jill, what you're saying now. You have a choice now. You either agree that that is the reality right now in America. Okay, maybe it will change in 100, 200, 300 years. But you either agree that that is the reality or you spend the rest of your life fighting it and losing energy. Or you step right. aside and you say, let the whole thing burn in hell if it wants to. It is not your responsibility. You really, really, you're one of the few, few people that have really tried. And none of you have to try because Jill tried. And you can see it's not... The, the country's laws are not made for the people current currently maybe exactly and then and they and they used to be more for the people i hear in what 100 200 years ago but they're not anymore so you either fight me. it you either fight it or you're not fight it i i i chose right. the path of not fighting anymore because i just lost too much energy right well i i think that it's not just they're either for or they're against. I think it's much bigger than all of that. And I think it's what you were talking about when you started the call. And it's about God. And it's about the calling of our hearts. Mm. And so people are going to find each other. And we will find, I've, I've always said this, as you know, I've been on this mission for a very long time with environmental architecture. And I'm old now. And um but I think that we'll all find ourselves and we'll all find each other. And I, I feel like that 
we're going to be able to set up satellite communities all over the world. And we're going to be able to raise our frequency above the grid so that we, our frequency is, is like Russia is a place. So now it's in my mind. It wasn't even in my mind as a place for ecotexture, but now it's in my mind that that is a place because of this call. When I saw that message come in, I was quite surprised. Yeah, right, Russia, huh? -huh. And the funny thing is one of my best friends is from Belarus. She's a younger woman and she has, invited me and wanted me to come there as well as friends in Kazakhstan and mm. other places. And, you know, I've thought about it, but then the propaganda, uh, like another lady was saying on the call about the war is you feel like as an American citizen, this would be a very unwise and stupid thing to do. And so it's the propaganda is on earth. It, Jill is the safest <laughs> place on earth. I, I'm so far from this war. I was I was driving 50 miles from the war. Let me show you these pictures where I was driving. You'll be surprised. The buildings, Mariupol, Google Mariupol, what was happening there. It was where Azov, Azov fascists hid for a month underground in this huge steel plant. And uh, I drove through that town. Uh, uh, swam in the ocean, picked, uh, and the whole big city is being rebuilt by Russia. Now, I I understand that, Alosha, but at the same time, it, I, are we wrong to believe that there is a, a very serious war going on right now? Yeah, you're very and wrong that, to believe that the the wars happening all the time. Uh, but and it's not a serious war. It's, it's the whole thing is blown up out of context. First of all, second of all, it's Russians fighting versus Russians. Uh, so they're obviously doing it for spiritual reasons. To what? You know what our message is to to them to Ukrainians. Fine, Russians are enemies. Fine, Russians are enemies. The, 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 the Russians and Russians are enemies to each other. Yeah. Russian and Ukrainians. It's the same language, by the way. <laughs> but Jesus Christ said what? <laughs> Forgive and love your enemies. Yes, yes. It's yeah. a quantum collapse. Yes. It's a quantum yeah. collapse. Well, I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I am very enlightened by this call, very enlightened to hear the things that you're telling us. And I appreciate it. And it's like, I think I have to recalibrate my brain a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just to like, just to embrace something that in my lifetime didn't feel like it. it Russia always felt so backwards, you know, when we were growing up, when we were young. Oh. And then it be, and then it, and then of course, when it, you became in 1989, when the wall fell and things changed very dramatically, it used to feel like a very dark gray, somber um look, yeah yeah look, look at this this is mariupol this is where i was driving past the war just uh and they're rebuilding the whole town they're rebuilding the whole town there, there was a massive this is this is this ukrainian war the whole town is being rebuilt there's so many scaffolds everywhere this is the theater, the main theater that uh, that took 400 people and they just blew up with 400 hostages inside a year ago. The whole city is being rebuilt uh, uh, at the same time. There is my car. So, uh, so this, this this is this is 50 miles from uh, the war zone um, and uh, absolute safety. Um, here, I'll show you one more. And properties are being sold everywhere. And and fruits. This is what I was showing you. Look at all those fruits. These are these are peaches, plums. They're all on the floor. Uh, and the whole Russia is like that. And this is the beginning of the season. I'm at the end of the season. Look at this fruit. This is what I was talking about. Look at all these pe plums, peaches. I don't even know. They're so tasty. Che cherries all over. <laughs> so, such abundance. Uh, yes, uh, Russia was backwards, but what it is now is. Um, is a very different place. It's uh, superseding even America in some some ways. Um, so, are you are you are you are you do you have any involvement at all with the government, or are you in any way? Um, how is it that you're able to like like I say, I don't quite understand because 
propaganda is propaganda. So obviously the media has propagandized what is happening and what side the Americans should be on. And in the very beginning of the war, up until I started, you know, listening to Bobby Kennedy, I was, you know, on the definite Ukrainian side and, yeah. and definitely and definitely followed that. And when my Russian friends told me I was crazy, I thought they were crazy. And um, so, but in any event, you know, war is war. People get killed. It's a horrible, horrible thing that's happening. And it's you, no matter how, what side of that equation so, so, you so, so Jill, stand on. So, so Jill, the war is sacred. First of all, we are not here to, to decide w w w war is sacred. This war is the best thing that's happening to our country right now. It's the best thing that's happening to the world right now. And um, Well, could you explain that? I did explain it earlier. You were out of the chat. Uh, I said that people are going atheists into the war. They're coming out believers. People are going there who never help their moms to do anything around the home. They're coming after the war and they say, Mom, where, where can I help? Where can I clean? What can I do around the home? That's just two examples. The so third example is... Um, people are becoming enlightened there or at the war like this. Um, so, the, you know, who are we to say that this war is terrible? You know, this is all uh, programming and the propaganda is going to become more and more because Russia just opened the doors to anybody who has had enough of LGBT and all this bullshit, transfer yeah. stuff, all this bullshit. Russia just opened the door saying, you can come. Anybody is welcome. We're accepting 2 billion people. I am working so, to as an American, to accept as an, Amer as an American, there's no problem. You do, you are able to travel freely. You couldn't be put in prison or, you know. No. Oh, my like God. The, no. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> no. Of course not. Why would they put you to jail? Our well, government you know, and even our people understand that it's not the American people that are uh, you know that are, that are doing this. It, it's the one percent that is sitting in 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 the northern sitting in America. They are traveling on a cruise boat. Uh, uh, there are people that are making decisions. Uh, the parking off in New Zealand. They're not even in America because if uh, you know shit hits the fan, they're far from America. So Ameri Russians understand that it's not Americans. Why would the jail? A woman like you who is coming, then the opening the heart. I had an American come and visit me. Uh, Australian came to visit me. Jill, stop watching news. Oh, another thing oh, that yeah. the oh, cool no, I've, happened I've, in I've our definitely, country. Definitely all brands due to sanctions left, and all American news from our country has left. Wonderful. So our media, <laughs> our media field is clean. We are not bombarded with anything anymore. We even they even banned all LGBT propaganda on uh, billboards or anything like that. It's a huge fine. Anything in the movie comes in, some man kissing another man, it's over. They find them, they build them. They you know. So if you come in with an open heart uh, and you come with like that, you just want you just want to come. You know, of course. Like, so so a low shot. So, could I come? Could I come and visit you? Could I just come and visit? Yes, this is what we're trying to organize. We're trying to organize a little bit of a tour, so we get about like five of you guys or three of you, and we go and uh, go and check out the country. We hire a van. We to take a, a, a one trip on a train. You have to travel on a train in Russia. It's really really cool. Okay, this really is very cool. exciting. Okay, yeah. we'll do, we'll do. So we can okay. organize I mean, even Oct October. It's still beautiful. The weather is still warm. October could be a great month. If it's too soon, let's do something in spring. If you want to come in winter and check out, uh, I, I skate on Baikal, uh, this huge lake with ice um, or anywhere, you know, come in winter. Winter is amazing time, especially if you're warm, uh, warmly dressed. So I'm open. Just send me an email or message me and let's organize this tour. But at least like three people would be nice. Then at least then my my journey is also paid. My tickets are paid, and um, I can enjoy the tour with you. Yes, that makes perfect sense. And I would say that um, it would be. I think something that would be interesting would be to um, 
in uh, explore the places that you are talking about for designing community. Oh, for, oh for having exactly. community. I already mentioned it earlier. We'll do a few places: Moscow and uh, uh, and land around it, nature around it, Saint Petersburg and nature around it. We'll go a bit north. Uh, two hours north of St. Peter's, very pretty, and we'll do the Caucasian mountain range. The Elbrus, which is five and a half thousand meters high, 17,000 feet, feet high, it's the tallest tallest mountain in Europe. We'll go there and check around there, and you can look at the lands around there, and we'll look at the lands on the other side of the mountain range, close to Black Sea. Uh, and we can even do uh, Crimea if there is such a request with pleasure so you could we could go to odessa because my grandmother is from odessa uh, so sorry odessa is not yet ours <laughs> it's it's gonna be soon ours so we'll once it's there and it's safe we'll go to odessa as well and i don't mean ours we like not attacking these lands and grabbing them we were fine to co cooperate and collaborate with ukraine next to us as a separate entity it's free will russia is all about free will Okay, Ukraine wanted to bring in, to join NATO in December 2022 or 2021, I don't remember. And the war started two months afterwards because they wanted to put nuclear missiles in Ukraine 300 miles, 260 miles from Moscow. That's why the war started. And everything else you hear afterwards is bullshit, crap. Fucking crap! Stop listening to it. It's like it's like if I just come and uh, you know slap you on your face, and then I'll say, "But Jill, you just slapped me." Look, everybody, Jill slapped me. Jill is murdering me. But I just slapped you on your face. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's that absurd. It's like you have to switch off it. And uh, there is a problem in America because I feel like everybody is so bombarded by news. Even if you switch off the TV, you switch off the internet, you switch off everything, there'll be a fucking neighbor that come to you and say, look uh, what Russians did, look at the phone, look what they just bombarded. And it's all, it's, it, it, even in Bucha, the whole thing was made up, especially in town Bucha, because the Bucha word sounds like butcher, and then they made Putin is a butchered people in Bucha. And in Bucha, they did a whole study that those bodies were put there the day before they were murdered by Ukrainians and the whole film crew came. Russians left five days before that it was a safe place. Five days before Butcher, they left Butcher. <laughs> they left, they went there. They Ukrainians murdered a whole bunch of people on purpose. And then they put the bodies there. They did whole satellite images. They showed that they, there's a whole proof out there. Um, but on the mass media, they bombarded you with this thing and said, fuck, Russians are zombies murdering children, raping women. It's fucking not true. If the opposite is happening, you know how American government works and, you, and, and UK government. They do something and they, they say the opposite in the new, exact opposite. Jill, you're a smart lady. Come on. <laughs> Guys, we're not, I'm not going to start proving you, you know, that Russia is is not a sin, is not sinning. You come here and you meet our people and you make that decision for yourself. Thank uh, you, Alosha. Thank you. I I definitely appreciate learning this tonight. Very very enlightening. Yeah, and it's very super good. safe. Nobody's going to jail you. They will look at your yeah. Facebook profile, and yet if you've been pushing against Russia in your Facebook, I'm sorry, you fucked yourself up. If you've been doing it on Facebook, you fucked yourself up because they'll even if you delete your profile, everything is on there. So if you've been pushing against Russia and for Ukraine out of your own stupidity, then you fucked yourself up in the foot. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't do that. Because they do screen you for that. Anyway, God bless. Aisha? <laughs> Alicia? Yeah. So I'm wondering about toxicity. I'm wondering about herbicides, pesticides, chemtrails. No chemtrails at all. No chemtrails no at chemtrails all. chemtrails at all. There, I can show you my sky. This is one of the biggest cities in Russia. Yeah. It's clean. No, nowhere. Our, government, not try, our, government, our population is decreasing. The last thing that they want to do is kill more people. They are promoting life. Our government promotes life. 
And why is the population decreasing? The population is decreasing is because um, uh, I believe it is because uh, women just like we've all gone into the spirituality. Look, it's not decreasing everywhere. It's a very wrong thing to say. You go out to the villages, to the land, people are having four or five children like standard, normal. Here, I'm at a workshop today with a guy who's got four kids. So it's normal to have lots of children. But in large cities, women become business ladies and they don't want to have children. So, And because a large population of uh, uh, Russia has relocated to the cities, I think, but also not all cities. Uh, there are cities like, um, and I'll take you to the place where you know the woman was prams every everywhere. Woman was prams. Uh, the the birth rate is high. So overall, uh, it's slowly decreasing, and that's why the opening. But it's of not because people are leaving. No, nobody's leaving. People are coming back now. People. There, there was a wave of people leaving when the war started. I'm not going to lie. But uh, people are coming back because even the Russians that left, that traveled to Europe, that traveled to America, they saw this insanity. Uh, you know, they saw the quality of life. I mean, yes. in winter, we all walk in underpants in our in our homes because uh, they central heating is so powerful <laughs> that everybody's in underpants. You know, uh, because all you open the windows if you want to dress. So you can get this freezing air inside. And that whole thing costs you $35 a month. Mm -hmm. Water, electricity, and heating. $35 a month. Mm -hmm. And what the, about um, herbicides and pesticides and glycosphate? Look, they're, they're spraying the, 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 these big fields, like in the south, they're going to grow all fruit, mass producing for the shops. Not gonna lie, they're spraying. They're spraying, but you have a choice. You can always grow your own, no, uh, no uh, um, uh, limitations on that. And you can always buy from those grannies that can, without license, sell on the streets. Uh, and grannies grow organic, and you can taste it. They're such sweet. So, uh, and they sell um, herbs, a lot of herbs like parsley, dill, uh, uh, spring onion, yeah. basil, lots of basil. You know. And they sell tomatoes, cucumber, um, and potatoes. That's like a standard pumpkins. Um, okay, so I think that what's behind my question is that, that here in Canada, that that is, um, you know, it's a corporate uh, capture of uh, Health Standards Canada, and so um, Health Standards can just captured by the corporations, and they're just delaying anything that has to do with glyphosate, um, and so it's it's just continued to be permitted. But so if there isn't corporate capture in Russia, why are people using them? <laughs> uh, we're talking about, first of all, large corporations that are growing singular crop over and over, not using permaculture, not using crop rotation. Yeah. Uh, of course, they have to use it. They have to use it because yeah. without, without fertilizer, nothing will grow if you're growing the same thing year after year. That's just a fact. Um so, uh, no, look, it's not all hunky-dory. My brother tried to grow organic wheat for seven years, and he used um, uh, clovers that he planted a year, yeah. uh, year to, to boost the land. And eventually, he uh, they would purchase his wheat. So I don't want to promote you this one-sided side of Russia that all is hunky-dory. They would purchase his wheat, and they'd give it to animal feed. Um, because uh, he doesn't meet some standards or something. And he did that for a seven, eight years. And eventually he just switched over to chemicals because oh dear. it's so is there, cheaper is for there, him. Like in, in India, for example, they're really moving towards biodynamic farming because the farmers have been so... Um, uh, yeah, so th there's so much opportunity in terms of like, if you want to do biodynamic farming, you can. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no, nobody's going to stop you. You know, um, if you want to do wild harvesting, you can a lot of wild harvest. You can wild, wild harvest. You can become a millionaire if you dry freeze all those blueberries, for example. Uh, mm. I, Aisha, it's, it, it's just, it's a land of opportunities. There's so many brands that have left our country right now uh, because of uh, sanctions that if you want to do clothes, you can a huge opportunities. 
Um, if you want to do manufacturing, amazing opportunities. In 3D printing, gosh, building, please come. The, you know, um, yeah, land is abundant. People are becoming abundant. There's cars everywhere. Like, like, like you know, like Jill was saying, the the country is backwards. Sure, we don't have so many electric cars, but there are cars everywhere. Everybody has a, a nice car. <laughs> you know, maybe two or three. Um, so uh, people are far less debt here. You know, because everybody has a flat that came from a mom or grandmother, and everybody has these Dutch homes. It's like a norm that you have a flat and a dacha home. Uh, of course, some people take it on credit and that's their thing. But uh, generally, uh, people are uh, like, you don't have to be indebted just to get into university because university is uh, $4,000 a year. $4,000 a year, four $5,000 a year. And you could even get accommodation probably in that included. So it's very affordable. But what I will do, guys, if there's any more burning questions, I'll answer them now. Otherwise, I'm going to translate this two-hour lecture uh, and take key points, write them out, and actually uh, tell you them because there'll be a lot more uh, useful stuff that will, um, you know, you'll get from the next uh, Zoom call. And I'll do that Zoom call uh, in in a couple of days. Just give me time to translate it, and uh, and, and 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 I'll get back to you. Uh, everybody needs to go on Telegram because things are becoming a little more trickier to uh, with emails because I can't use words like Russia in my email. Um, so Telegram is uh, uh, by our architecture. There it is. Swift, yes, uh, Swift banned in Russia, um, uh, but crypto is uh, really working well. So. Uh, my friend is moving me money from PayPal to uh, crypto. Um, and I just uh, send it straight to my card, uh, bank card. No problem. Um, by choice, I pay 4% tax by choice. So I, nobody asks me any questions. And, and I'm really happy to pay the 4% because, you know, because I believe in our government. I really love my, our government. Uh, strange as it sounds like <laughs> I really love our government everything is working like clockwork chick, chick, chick. safety schools buses oh my god the public transport system is fucking amazing you could get, buses are working on clockwork you can see them on the map all the buses moving on your map Yandex maps the trains are like clockwork minute to minute <laughs> if you're 30 seconds late it's finished it's gone okay and that's all over the whole country there's so many railways and you can travel in three different classes uh, 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 the class where the open beds everywhere even in the passageways one two three four and in the passageways one two that's the open class, the cheapest one. Let's talk about long distance travel, yeah? The two days, one day, three days. Um, <clears throat> and then there is a coupe, which is just closed cabin and four people. So if you come and travel, we'll take a whole, if you come and join me in Russia for like, a, because you can get a three months visa now, we'll take a coupe and we'll, for example, travel from Moscow to uh, St. Petersburg, which is like seven hours. And you can just enjoy and look at the nature, you know? Uh, and then there is a uh, business class, which is just two people in a thing and uh, you have your own toilet in the train. Um, and like, it's it's like superb, really superb. So it's a cherry on top. Um, the, the public transport system, I, I, I can't, I can't, uh, can't it's it working so well. It, it, I can't describe how well it's working. It, trams uh, with electrical connection, uh, buses with electrical connection, a thing that goes up and then there's cables in the sky that it connects to. Electrical buses that are quiet. Uh, petrol buses. Uh, underground metro, which is just, it's so beautiful, uh, especially in Moscow. It's so beautiful, so pretty. Every station is like a Gaudi work of art. Uh, not every, but a lot, of, a lot of stations are very beautiful. And they work... Every 40 seconds a train comes. Just, just, just wait. In New York, I waited for 15 minutes for an underground train. And in an underground, 15 minutes. Every 40 seconds a train comes. 
in peak time. Then during the day, maybe about a minute and a half. So it it's uh, uh, yeah. Jill about writing for uh, in Facebook, uh, you know, uh, no ghettos, no garbage, no garbage, no, no garbage at all on the streets, very, very, very clean, and no ghettos, no homeless people, no homeless people at all. First of all, they'll freeze to death. You have to be such a lazy bum, a lazy bum. You really like, I don't want to do anything. If you just want to even sweep a street, they'll pay you money just to please sweep streets. We don't have enough labor. We're bringing labor in from Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, because there's not enough labor. And uh, if you just want to just do something, you'll have enough to pay rent and live somewhere. But if you really, really, really don't want to do anything and want to be a bum on the street, you'll drink and you'll be lying on a bench. They won't move you. But at night, you have to get off. At night, they have a place where they collect them all. A few really lazy bums that degraded to that level. They collect them all. They take them to a place where they sleep. That no, you don't sleep. See people sleeping at night on the streets. Uh, maybe in warm regions, somebody sneaks into the park and sleeps on a on a bench, but uh, very rare. Um, Moscow, like cities, uh, other cities. There's so much job opportunities. Like, you know what I'm saying? You really have to, I want to be a bum on a, like, I don't want to say that, but you, you have to claim it to the universe and really don't do anything with your life. Yes, you'll be a bum on, your, on the street, but even then they'll give you shelter at night. So like beggars standing on the streets, begging for money, touching you, God forbid, none of that exists. It's so clean and safe. You, 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 it's so clean and safe. You'll think you, 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 I don't know what you'll think. I don't think you'll ever, maybe you, maybe America 50 years ago like that. I don't know. I don't know what it was like. I wasn't born then, but it, nobody touches you. Nobody harasses you. Nobody bothers you. The worst that thing that can, can happen, they can ask you if they, they think you're rational, how to get, if they're lost somewhere, but everybody's got phones, maps. Uh, no, nobody even, nobody even says hello on the streets. You don't have to say hello if you don't want to. But if you go to a forest, people walking past in the forest, they'll say hello, good morning, you know, and um, which was very nice, which is very nice. It's really, really safe. It's really cool. But you have to come and experience. What other question? Uh, corporate caption, you say, yeah, stop fighting it, guys. Um, GMOs, GMOs are banned here completely. Um, winter, winter is cold. But as I said, the flats are so heated, you don't uh, have a problem. The, the cities are all lit up. Lots of fairy lights, lots of lights everywhere. So the, it becomes like a winter wonderland. Ice sculptures, lots of theater. You know, in wintertime, you go to theater, you go to plays, you go to ballet. Uh, I love winter. It's the time where I put my desk at, at the look at that snow falling. And that's when I draw. That's when I draw my architecture. I was a stupid bum <laughs> to promise everybody that I'll draw you a, a home in summer. I couldn't draw in summer. It's a different energy. I want to be on the streets. I want to be hiking. I want to be swimming in the in the sea. But no, I promised everybody because I'm gonna I'm gonna draw them a, a, a watelarium home. I can't do it in summer. But winter is a perfect time for it. So yes, winter is long, but. You can always go to Thailand, Brazil, if you really, you can go south. Winter in the south is more rainy. It's much warmer, much, much warmer. It doesn't go below uh, zero uh, Celsius. So you can, uh, you know, you have a choice. You can always go to Turkey. $50 for a ticket to Turkey. <laughs> you, It's summer there all year round. You can go to Egypt for the same price. So if you're talking about close by, uh, and that's summer, you know, really warm. You Dubai is open, is right here. You so if you want summer, it's fifty dollars and you're there. Fifty, uh, fifty, a hundred dollars, you're there. You, you, you in baking summer, you'll run from there back to winter. So travel is open. Travel to America is difficult now because the American consulates have been closed in Russia by American choice, um, by by the American government's choice, but. Uh, 
Uh, like if I want to get a visa to America, I have to travel to Turkey to a closest Russian consulate and apply a closest American consulate and apply from there. That's that's not Obama for me in America right now. But everything else is working fine and you'll be getting a visa from America. So you just need to investigate. Um, I don't think it's a problem, but just investigate. Okay, so guys, we'll do another one uh, soon, two, three days time. I don't want to promise again, but but very soon. I'll As soon as I get those points, I'll translate. I just couldn't listen in one ear and translate. It wasn't working. I have to speak from my heart. And I spoke from my heart. Sorry if I swore, but, you know, I'm a human. I love you. Thank you, friends. Thanks for being with me. And if anybody wants to come on a uh, uh, come to Russia, let's plan something. Uh, you, you know, you can write to me in Telegram. I can set up. A, you know what? I will I will send you a link right now to uh, uh, to a ch to. You know what? Uh, 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 write write to me. Write a comment. I will write in my in this bio architecture Telegram group. I'm going to write a message now. Who wants to come in Russia to, for a visit? Comment under, and let's start a conversation in that post. Okay. In this bar architecture uh, Telegram group that I've sent you, I'm, it's the only one I market. Uh, T dot M E forward slash buyer underscore architecture. Or you can message, or you can email me. There's a way to contact me. If you want to contact me, you'll find a way. You know, all my resources are on my website as well. Okay. God bless our world. May you have a lovely day. Thank you so much. I mean, I mean.